Okay, last time I did a sketchbook tour, I was like, let's just do a quick flip through, and then it was 30 minutes long. So I'm gonna hard stop at 15 if I get there. This is a sketchbook. I just finished this last month. Um, I'm kind of on track to finish a sketchbook a month or more. Um, it's kind of weird because I've drawn a lot of them at different times. So sometimes it's nice and clean, like this one I wrote the date, beginning and end. Um, but other times I'm going back and forth, so it's hard to tell. You know, I might work on three in a month, plus like a roll of paper, and I don't actually finish any one of them. But if you put all those drawings into one book, it would more than overflow it. So, but this one is nice and neat. Boom. It's like uh, three weeks. No, it's, it's just shy of a month. Um, the sticker on the front, I've been um, emblazoning my sketchbooks with these uh, stickers that I have. Maybe emblazoning isn't the right word, but... Here's like a little uh, trading card that I glued on there on my current one. But it's just kind of nice since I use pretty much the same sketchbook every time. Um, it's nice to be able to identify them quickly. And it's a great use for my stickers. So this is from uh, my buddy up in Alaska, Dow of Draw. I'll link his uh, social medias and Twitch and everything down below. But a uh, great graphite artist, really awesome draftsman. Um, does some really fun characters. Anyways, let's begin. 523 to 619. This is a uh, beginning of my dynamic sketching extension course. And I believe we were doing um, kind of like hard surface rendering, um, starting with glossy metal surfaces. Some of them are from Ref, some are not. I wish I had smoothed these out a little bit more. I used a lot of line and it kind of made it look like I had a texture weathered kind of surface on some of them as opposed to just like a nice smooth I should use like a colored pencil or some sort of brush instead of a fine liner with white but if you squint it still works pretty well um, I was really annoyed with my hatching at the beginning of this book I just could not get it even and all my lines had little tiny tails on them and let's see if I can show you that real quick so you can see there's like little tiny tails on the end of my lines. They're not really um, not really perfectly aligned and they're not wrapping around either. They're like kind of, it's not describing the form very well. Um, it's just messy, you know? So I've really been working on that since uh, I started this book and I think it gets better by the end for sure. Um, I kind of chilled out and I think I think a little bit more before each line, even if I'm putting down hundreds of lines in a square inch. Then we moved on to matte surfaces. Uh, I think these are from reference, these were not. Um, although this might be like a computer mouse, I'm not, I'm not sure. I kind of just went way too hard on these in general. This is like unnecessary. Uh, if the <laughs> goal is to study matte surfaces, why would I then draw this <laughs> leather strap? That's kind of silly, but nice little teapot. Uh, this is like my hydro flask again like the the direction and the uniformity of the lines even in the cast shadow It's just kind of rough um, Same here like that one that one's pretty believable, right? But it's just it looks scratchy and it's supposed to be like a smooth but matte lit surface so um, But it's okay. We get better by the end. There's a little note after I got some feedback make this more uniform. I think pretty much everything in this book is also like homework related for that class, but they're all drawings I'm proud of and it's cool to see how much I'm improving just in, you know, a couple weeks. That's like a gas tank to a motorcycle. Another helmet. I like that one a lot actually. I like the um the rounded weathered matte surface kind of deal. And then we did weathered surfaces. This is like a inside of a boat turbo. It's all rusty. Boba. I spent so much time on these. I really didn't need to, you know. I'd like I needed to. Um, I'm still doing this now, but I need to just like chill out. When it's just a study, you don't need to render the entire subject because um, you can get the point from just a little bit of it, and it's not like a final illustration. These are just sketches and studies. So um, here I do a little bit better. When I actually put in a circle and say, don't render outside that circle, it works pretty well. Um, so like here, 
I concentrated it, and it looks nice. Um, all of these kind of look nice, but on other ones, <laughs> I just go a little too hard. It's an old rusty mirror. It's kind of pockmarked. It's a pipe from my bathroom. <laughs> Bottom of my hydro flask is all dented like everybody's hydro flask. Um, the hatching really bothers me there. It is not. It's supposed to be a steady curve, right? And even if you're transferring, because I don't want to have to draw that big long curve every time. Even if I'm blending them together, there should still be a uniform direction to them. So we'll get better. It's okay. Don't worry. Um, these are actually for my... Um, anatomy class. There's some anatomy studies in here too. I forgot about that. Um, in pencil. So uh, we had to draw some hands. These are from uh, one of my favorite um, early 20th century illustrators, J.C. Leyendecker. Really awesome artist. Um, Norman Rockwell's idol, basically. Um, really, really nice. Really like bubbly. Like the way he rendered things was very round and just check them out. It's really good. Lots of old illustrations from the early, uh, like 1920s basically were, were, um, his work. This is like from one of his collar ads. It was like this pit on collar. This is like the quintessential American man. Um, these, I went to the aquarium, drew some of these, uh, from life. I wish, um, in hindsight that I had done a couple more, like, thumbnails of them. Like, draw each fish a couple times and then do, like, a final moment some rendering. Because if you just sit here and try to render and get all the details, the fish is going to move or, you know, it's just like, you don't learn as much about it. You need to observe more. Here is another hand from, uh, that anatomy class. Which, by the way, that anatomy class was terrible, but uh, I made it through. Learned a lot, but I learned a lot because of me. No help from the teacher, really. <laughs> this one, I, I feel like it's overworked, but I still like it. It's almost like it just contrasts the sleeve too much, but it's okay. Same with this one. Um, I have a problem with overworking, I think keep telling myself to simplify and then this is what comes out but that's okay some people will uh, appreciate it nonetheless these are from some photos I took from the aquarium lion's mane jellyfish um, it's a fun little iteration here I was like drew this one and I um, kind of like carved out the spaces where it's a darker value and filled them in with hatching and then added in a couple of forms and some lines down here and I like that. It's really simple and nice, but I wanted it to be a little more complex without like just going crazy. So then here, I made it a little more complex, but it was kind of crazy. So then here I tried to merge the two, and that worked pretty well. Um, there's some nice like in and out, and it doesn't feel clustered or like painful to look at. And then this is like nice and simple. Um, and these notes, for whatever reason, I will always remember them. Like, light is concentrated to edges. Think like an animator. Like, just writing those things helps me a lot when I try to draw jellyfish. And I actually had a commission where I had to draw, like, some jellyfish-related things. Um, and I didn't even have to, like, really find a reference. I just, like, remembered these rules that I wrote for myself. So, that's the power of good uh, sketching and note-taking, I guess. These things are wild. They're like living fossils. I guess they have been on Earth for a very, very long time. Really wacky. They're not actually crabs. Their mouth is like in the center of their body. Some sort of isopod, I believe they're called. Really hard shell. They have eyes out here um, on the outside of their shell. And then, um, but yeah, they're just weird. <laughs> but fun subject to draw. Had a good time constructing them, and they have a really interesting, like, this would be a cool spaceship design. Or maybe like a submarine. Sci-fi sub. Uh, these, someone asked me to draw something from memory. An apple with a worm in it. That's a really weird request, but someone requested it. And it actually turned out really poorly, so <laughs> I guess I need to draw more apples. Um, and this, I think someone was asking me, like, what my favorite animal to draw is, and that would have to be the vampire squid. I can draw that thing from memory so well. I don't know why. It just has such a really 
you know, memorable form and I don't know, I dig it. It's nice. Crazy wolf fish. This is marine life week, by the way, for my dynamic sketching class. There's lots of fish and weird sea creatures. I tried to keep it to the weird because like, fish, whatever. Once you can draw one fish, it's not that hard to draw others. But um, the weirder and creepier they are, the it's like new language. So this is pretty fun. Um, really scary fish. They have like, they're kind of like, um, I don't even remember those. There's some animal that can like really destroy stuff with its mouth. <laughs> I'm blanking. But this fish has tons of power in its jaws. They've like put stuff inside a dead head and it snaps shut and like breaks it off. It's crazy. I think these are teeth in here, these bubblies. They have teeth on the inside of their mouth as well. On the roof. I drew quite a few iterations of this. Then I tried to draw the head from uh, imagination or from memory, I guess. I think some feedback I got on this from uh, Peter Hahn was like, think more about straights and curves, make it a more interesting drawing. Um, I kind of like had it here, and then I like made it more complex and relied on the reference image. But I could have just made this like a nice straight and then had more curves down here, and it would have given a nice contrast to the image and like guided the eye around. Even the head like is nice and straight and then round on the bottom. If I had continued that, would have given the fish a nice energy. But I still like them. That one is the least menacing looking. Kind of cute, honestly. This is the weirdest fish I've ever seen. Armored sea robin. Apparently they honk when you take them out of water, which fish don't usually have, um, like, voices. So that's pretty weird. But this drawing, I, I kind of like, I feel like I approached a new level. <laughs> I don't know, like, the, the hatching and the form building and going around the curves and everything really came together, and uh, I really like how it turned out. And it's got really cool forms too. I like, I like it a lot. So this would also make a cool alien or something like that. This I was practicing um, hatching, and on this one I just kept the paper how it is now, like straight up and down, and went around the form. And then this one, I turned it to try to see how much of a difference there was. And there's a little bit of a difference, but not really. I feel like my hatching just sucks in every direction. <laughs> so I just gotta keep practicing, but it's fine. I get better by the end. I just slow down and it starts to work. I did some coral studies. Um, some of this stuff is just so tedious to draw. I'm kind of running into this this week with trees and rocks, like, it should be simpler. Um, trees especially, it's like, there's gotta be a simpler way, but it's really hard to um, represent these things with simple shapes because of how complex they are, how much information there are is. And unless you're super far away where it'd just be like a circle, it's, it's not gonna look like what it is unless you add in a lot of that information. So that's something I'm struggling with, but I like how these turned out. I think maybe this, these two could have been a little bit more simplified, but not mad. And already my hatching is looking better here, so. This is a crazy animal. Uh, it's called the Limacina. They're known as sea butterflies. They're like tiny little snails that um, have adapted to swim. So their shells are like razor thin. They're translucent, they're so thin because if they were heavy, they wouldn't be able to swim. And then their top of their body kind of split into two fins. And this is where their little eyes would normally be or whatever they are. And they flap their fins like wings, like a butterfly. It's actually like the same mechanical motion as a butterfly. And they kind of like flap through the water in like little swarms. And they're this big and they're crazy colorful and translucent, super cool animals. I definitely, there's, someone took some crazy photos of them. And that's what I used as my reference. But I definitely recommend checking it out. Just look up sea butterfly. They're they're nuts. Really beautiful, crazy animals. And they're super alien, like a lot of things in the ocean. But they're actually like not that they're not like deep sea creatures. They're up near the surface in Alaska. So 
it's crazy all the things you learn when you start to draw. Um, it really just like opens your eyes to more than just what things look like, but also you learn about things you never would have thought existed and how they work and, you know, nature and function and everything about them. Super cool. These are a struggle because I was trying to get a translucent uh, quality to it. So I use lots of white hatching. Um, and it worked because I kind of have to like suggest the form underneath with like a darker hatch, but not like a thick line because that's blurred by the shell and then go over it again where the light would be reflecting off the shell. This reminds me of the Demogorgon's mouth from Stranger Things. And this looks like a wacky um, like sci-fi bomber. I might try to do something with that later. And then this one might have been my um, favorite to learn about. It's called a Yeti crab. Really wild crab that lives in Antarctica near thermal vents. And they're actually like stuck. Their environment is just near these thermal vents because if they go too far away from them, it's too cold and they die. So they just swarm around the vent and farm bacteria in all this fur and then eat it out of their fur. Super weird. Um, but it's cool seeing like a giant mountain of these white hairy crabs trying to stay warm. I think um, similar to like trees, I gotta get a nice tighter silhouette here and not rely on the value. Um, Cause if I just left it blank in there and did a nice tight silhouette, it'd be obvious that it was furry. Yeah, that doesn't look good either. Like this one actually works pretty well because of how light I made everything. And then I have that little bit of silhouette on the outside. But if it was any bigger, it wouldn't work. I need to make that silhouette darker like on the legs. But I like this page, it's lined up. It almost looks like an, like an illustration journal kind of setup. You know, you have like all these, like a kind of nice spiral through the page, so. Um, this, someone asked me to draw a capuchin monkey from memory. That is not it. Um, they have much bigger, cuter eyes. That looks more like an ape than a monkey. Minus the tail. Then I went on vacation and um, I still managed to draw a decent amount, but it was just like short little drawing stints. Um, no long hours like I did on those previous pages. So this was a coyote skull my friend had. Um, I drew that from life and that turned out really well. Um, I think I made the nose just a little bit too long, but I think that's probably within the, there's like some variance, you know, within the species. Okay, we're past 15 minutes, but I'm almost done. There's like some variants within species that allow their nose to be a little bit longer maybe. So I think it still looks good. Here are some fish from memory. Not very good. It's okay. There's my dad with some pastels. Everyone in my family thinks this is terrifying. So I'm just going to flip right past that. Uh, this was kind of an off night for me. I think I was just super exhausted. But this is a mink skull that my dad gave me. And uh, I have that still. I might try and draw it again. Give it another whack. That one looks pretty good. But I think it has a longer nose. These are all done while talking to people, which I hadn't done in a long time. And it's cool how much they worked. Um, I drew my little brother. I drew Casey. I drew some Yahoo on the plane. Um, it's kind of nice drawing from life. It's good fun. And that makes it really feel like a diary brings me back to those moments. This is a baseball glove, obviously. Also drawn from life. A hand plane, also drawn from life. I was just kind of rummaging through the house. Some self-portraits. This was also for my anatomy class. They turned out pretty good. I think they all look like me well enough. This is uh, one of my least favorite drawings of monkeys that I've done in recent years, or I guess the recent year, the most, this current year. <laughs> it looks really flat. I, I don't know what happened. It just, it looks, doesn't look very three-dimensional. It looks very flat on the page. Then we entered bird week on dynamic sketching. I went way too hard this week. Um, I also had my anatomy final that was, um, 
it was not explained very clearly what I needed to do for that. And I did twice as much work as needed, so I drew about 65 hours this week. And um, a lot of it was just making an anatomy diagram for that final, but I went way too hard on the birds. I rendered like every single bird, it seems like. Every pose I did a final render of, and that was totally unnecessary. Just draw the poses and then pick one to render, and then your brain can fill in the rest of the details, because these are all a package. So, but this is a crazy bird. It's got like googly eyes. It's hilarious. And a big frog mouth. It's just a waste of page. Here's one of the anatomy studies I did, the final. I'm excited to do more of this. I don't really have time right now with all my other homework, but I think one of the next classes I'm going to take is going to be a figure drawing class, and I want to really kind of like hone in on a style and um, some preferences for this, because right now I just kind of like do what I feel like. <laughs> I don't have any like method, so. Um, but I know like I know all these muscles now, which is cool. I also did a front view of uh, Michelangelo's David, but I did that on white paper on another book, so. Some more birds, skulls. I didn't need to do a skull study for every bird either, but I did a lot of them. I went way too hard. This page is nice, but then again, I rendered this entire bird and it was behind all the other birds. It was just like a waste of time, but still good practice. I'm not mad that I drew that much. I just didn't need to. <laughs> And if I was, like, getting paid or something, I would definitely need to tone it down. I'm a fan of these skulls. They turned out really well. Honestly, this, this the vulture, everything I did for the vulture worked pretty well. Crazy little uh, New Zealand flightless bird. A little over rendered again. I could have just kept all this up here and simplified that. Here, definitely so. I just rendered the entire thing. I didn't need to do that. Could have just kept it up there. I did some brush pen studies here. And then a quick marker study. I love drawing like this. This is like my favorite way to do color. Just straight in with marker and kind of build it up from the lightest value to the darkest. Um, and then I went in with ink at the end. I love it. So fun. It's kind of like a mixed media approach. There's pencil, there's marker, there's ink. Crazy garbage eating bird from Africa. They're huge. They eat everything. So here it is eating a flamingo. Pretty fun. Uh, I really like these drawings actually, but again, just too much work. I was going, look, I, did, I rendered that one, and then I rendered this one. I was like, why did I do that? I could have just kept them both simple forms. I already know what it looks like. There's no need to like go this hard, so whatever. I'm thankful that I kept these pretty simple because I would have died if I did any more. And then here's another one of those marker studies. I actually like this a lot. It's one of my favorite drawings uh, of the last month. Cast away from memory. I'm gonna keep flipping through. I don't need to look at that. Philippine Eagle. I had this terrible person come into my stream while I was working on this, and I will never look at this bird or these drawings again without thinking about how awful that person was to me. <laughs> they then harassed me for like 48 hours straight on every platform imaginable. Um, but I think they have since been banned from uh, Twitch, so we got them. Checkmate. And it's not that I really care. It was just, like, obnoxious, you know? It was, like, it was kind of funny, you know? But, I don't know. They were just being weird. It was it was strange. I don't, I don't want to get into it, but they were strange, and now they're gone. So that's all that matters. I like that one a lot. I don't like that one a lot. And then here's the last bird I did, Tufted Puffin. These are from pictures. Some of them are from pictures I took as well at the, um, the zoo. It's a really funny, cute bird. I am a fan. Uh, someone asked to draw those like bloated, uh, bloated cheat goldfish. So these are from memory. 
And then I looked it up, it turns out it's actually their eyeballs that are bloated. So either their eye goes out to the outside of it or it blows up on the underside and makes their eyes point up. I don't know what the point of that is. Like, why would they adapt that? Maybe it's like not, <laughs> it's not a good adaptation and they're just gonna die off. But I think humans will probably keep them alive. I don't know. This is actually based on a picture I took at the zoo. Puffins live in little burrows, really cute. And then we were tasked with the um, goal of drawing dinosaurs inspired by the birds that we drew. I had never like drawn dinosaurs before, so I had no idea how to even construct them, but I tried, a little goofy. I also was drawing with a brush pen and it just, uh, I don't know, didn't work very well. Um, I like that guy, he's funny. But I'm definitely gonna invest some more time into this later. And then uh, we moved on. Here's some just some lines, but we moved on to planes the next week. Just finished that one. These are uh, Corsairs. They're like the classic World War II uh, naval fighter. Their wings fold up. I like these drawings. They're pretty fun. My next sketchbook has nine more planes <laughs> that I studied. And then, of course, every sketchbook is finished with a Star Wars drawing. So I drew the Imperial Probe droid. That is all for the sketchbook tour. I'm 10 minutes over. Hope you enjoy. Um, I'm already halfway through another one. <laughs> so you might have another tour coming up real soon. But thanks for watching. I will see you later.